You're listening to the Tapis Paranormal Talking Point Podcast, a show that discusses various aspects of the paranormal world, with paranormal news, ghost stories, interviews, and much more. And without further ado, let's get into some talking points. Hi guys, Scott here from Tapis Paranormal, and welcome back to the Tapis Paranormal Talking Point Podcast. So today we're going to be looking at eight haunted hotels from around the world. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it with the first haunted hotel. Up first we have the Mermaid Inn in Rye. Located in East Sussex, the Mermaid Inn is said to be one of the most haunted inns in England. The hotel is reported to contain a number of spirits within, many of which have links to the building's history. Within the hotel, six rooms are said to be particularly active. In room 16, guests have reported waking to a duel being fought beside the bed, with the combatants wearing period clothing and fighting with rapiers. In room 1, a woman in white can be seen sat near the fireplace, and clothes left in that room are often found soaked in the morning for no clear reason. A lady in white is said to be seen in room 5, where she stands ominously at the foot of the bed, and in room 17, a rocking chair is said to move on its own. Throughout the years, numerous investigators and psychics have visited the hotel, and each have reported their own stories and experiences. The town of Rye is said to be densely populated with reported paranormal hauntings, including the Ypres Tower, which I've previously spoken about and visited on the Tepes Paranormal YouTube channel. So, is the Mermaid Inn another location in this already haunted town? Next up on the list, we have the Stanley Hotel. Found in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, the Stanley Hotel is said to be one of the most haunted buildings in America. Though it's commonly known as the inspiration of Stephen King's The Shining, the Stanley Hotel has a large number of ghosts and spirits within that seem far from fictional. The Stanley Hotel was built by inventor Freeland Oscar Stanley and was opened in 1909 as an elegant and grand hotel. However, by the 1970s, the hotel had become dishevelled and may have ended up closing and being demolished until Stephen King stayed there one night and was inspired to write The Shining. The hotel is said to contain a number of spirits, including the spirit of Stanley himself, who is said to roam the hotel, often seen by staff in the hotel's billiards room and bar. Stanley's wife Flora is also spotted within the hotel and can often be heard playing the piano. Another ghost in the property is that of Mrs. Wilson. Tour guides in the hotel say that Wilson was lighting lanterns in room 217 when she was injured in an explosion. She later passed away, but her spirit is rumoured to remain in room 217, with guests reporting items moving, lights switching on and off on their own, and unmarried couples often feeling a cold and unwelcoming presence between them in bed. Room 217 also happens to be the room in which Stephen King stayed upon his visit to the hotel, and where he had such lucid nightmares about the hotel that The Shining was born. The hotel is also said to be home to child spirits, with an autistic child ghost named Billy being seen at the hotel, and with children's laughter and footsteps being heard on the fourth floor. The hotel is also said to feature the ghosts of a dog and a cat, which have both been seen wandering around the property. Next up we have the Hotel Roosevelt. Located in the middle of Hollywood, Los Angeles, the Roosevelt Hotel opened back in 1927 and has a largely star-studded history. It was often used for movie premiere after-parties and even hosted the first Oscars. The most famous ghost of the hotel is that of Marilyn Monroe, who is said to haunt the old room in which she lived for two years early in her career. It's also worth noting that her first ad was said to be shot in the hotel's pool. One of the most common sightings of Monroe comes when staff and guests look into the mirror in the Monroe suite, where, in some instances, they see Marilyn Monroe looking back at them. The spirit of a little girl in a blue dress has also been spotted in the same room. In addition to this, the apparition of actor Montgomery Clift is also blamed for patting guests' shoulders and for watching maids work in room 928. And the ghost of Carol Lombard has been seen floating around the upper floors of the hotel. Finally, the ghosts of two suited figures have been seen in the Blossom Room, where the first Oscars took place. These figures have reportedly been documented, though I can't find any proof of this online. Next up we move across to France and the Chateau de Marseille. The chateau is a 15th century castle that's since been converted into a hotel. The hotel has a particularly scary urban legend and myth behind it. The story goes that one of the women of the castle transformed into a werewolf at night. The story then goes on to state that a farmer shot the werewolf and killed her. Since then, the ghost of this lady has been seen wandering around the hotel, with staff and guests alike witnessing this lady who wanders 
of the grounds dressed in white. Werewolves are an interesting one, as obviously they're heavily documented and heavily referenced throughout history. So, could werewolves exist? Let me know your thoughts on werewolves in the comments down below. Now we move on to the Adelphi Hotel. Those of you that listened to the last episode of this podcast will know that during the news segment I mentioned the Adelphi Hotel. The hotel, which is said to be the most haunted hotel in Britain, can be found in Liverpool, and the current building was built in 1914. Throughout the 20th century, the hotel has been popular amongst the famous, with guests such as Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland and Bob Dylan all staying there. Prime Minister Winston Churchill was also a fan of the hotel, opting to host a number of strategy meetings within. It's also rumoured, though unproven, that a 20-year-old Adolf Hitler worked at the hotel. The hotel was also used as an arrival and departure point for those sailing on many ocean liners leaving Liverpool, including the Titanic. Ghosts seen in this hotel range from three men who some suspect are members of the Titanic's crew, including the captain Edward Smith, a lady in a grey Victorian-style dress who is seen in the basement, and the sighting of somebody hanging from a locked window in the Crosby room, although when they checked, there was nobody there. YouTuber and host of the Atman podcast, Dooley Rhino, stayed in the hotel several years ago, unaware at the time of its haunted reputation, and had some strange experiences during his stay. Jordan was kind enough to tell me about that stay, which I'll play for you now. Okay, so my experience at the Adelphi Hotel in Liverpool was completely by chance. So basically, I was with Jack, mate, and he had... I don't know, as part of this thing that he was doing, he there was these kids that were on like a summer school thing. And basically he was just doing a talk. And because I was about, I went with him and I actually ended up doing the talk with him. It was quite cool. But um, we were in Liverpool for it. And we were like, do we drive up and come back the same day? Or do we get a hotel and have a night out? And we we're like, oh, fuck it. We'll get a hotel in and have a night out. And we were sat in a pub. And the hotel that was right next to the pub was the Adelphi. So we're like, fuck it, that one will do. So we walk over and we book the hotel. And I mean, it's a bit eerie. It looks fresh out of the shining, but we book it and then we go out for a few drinks. And then while we're out for a few drinks, I hit 30,000 subscribers, right? We go back to the hotel room just to like regroup. And then I do a story from the hotel room and I'm like, oh, I just hit 30,000 subscribers. Let's go. Fucking brilliant. So happy, right? I get a DM from someone and they're like, are you in a hotel in Liverpool? And initially I was like, oh, fucking stalker. This is a bit weird. (laughs) I was like, but reluctantly I was like, yeah, why? And they're like, is it the Adelphi? And again, I was like, oh, fucking hell. But I thought they've obviously recognized the decor or something. Plus there's like 300 rooms in this hotel. So how are they going to know which one we're in? Yes. And they were like, you do realise that is the most haunted hotel in Liverpool, probably the most haunted hotel in the country. And I was just like, great, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> anyway, I didn't think much else of it. Went back out, had a night out, got back early hours. Now, these rooms, they're very like Victorian looking. The ceilings are so high. Decor is very dated. And there's like a random chair in the corner of the room, which is quite creepy when you wake up in the middle of the night. And throughout the night, the fire alarm went off at three separate intervals around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. It was all very fucking disorientating and it was just very eerie. But the fact that, you know, the alarm went off three times, don't they say the devil will knock three times, all that kind of stuff. And also why would a fire alarm go off three times in the early hours of the morning? Now, obviously it could be someone pissing about or whatever, but... Apparently, lots of people have seen and heard and experienced weird shit in the Adelphi. I experienced great unease and those three fire alarms, which could be, of course, absolutely nothing or could be something a little bit more sinister. Yeah, I have to say, I am raring to go back. And in the new year, I think I will book myself into a room at the Adelphi, maybe interview some of the staff do a little paranormal investigation. And uh, Scott, I ask you as an invitation right now on your podcast, please come with me. I'll pay for the rooms, come up, we'll take a few of us and we'll do a paranormal investigation in 2022 of the Adelphi Hotel. But yeah, spooky stuff. So thank you to Jordan for telling us his story and I'd love to accept his offer of investigating the Adelphi with him in the future. 
Please make sure to check out Jordan's YouTube channel, Doody Rhino, for exploration videos, true crime stories, conspiracies, and paranormal tales, as well as checking out one of my favourite podcasts, the Atma Podcast, available in video form on YouTube, as well as audibly wherever you listen to your podcasts. Moving on from the Adelphi, we have the Queen Mary. The Queen Mary is found in Long Beach, California, and is a retired British ocean liner that has turned into a hotel. Initially christened in 1934 by Queen Mary herself, when it was retired more than three decades later, it became a hotel in which guests can sleep, surrounded by the original panelling and portholes, imagining what life would have been like to sail the Atlantic in style. The ship was converted into a troop ship for Allied soldiers during the Second World War, and afterwards was converted back into a cruise ship and put back into service. By the 1950s, the Queen Mary was ageing and had declining profits, and in 1967, she left Southampton and sailed to Long Beach for the final time, where she remained moored permanently. As of 2021, the ship faced a series of bankruptcies and failed developments, and the city of Long Beach took control of the ship, vowing to force the required repairs upon it, the outcome of which is still unknown. As for the ghosts related to this old ship, since its permanent mooring, over 150 ghosts have been reported aboard, while some are basic and common occurrences like laughter coming from unoccupied rooms, lights switching on and off and objects moving. Others are much more out of the ordinary. A man in dark clothes with a beard is one of the ship's most common apparitions, and he's said to be the ghost of a fireman crushed by a watertight door during a fire drill. His ghost is now commonly seen around the area of the door that killed him. Suite B340 is said to be the most haunted room of the hotel, and was recently opened to the public, and features reports of footsteps, faucets turning on and off, and toilets flushing on their own. Finally, a young girl is often seen playing hide and seek with guests at night in the empty swimming pool, and the salon contains a woman in white said to slide and dance across the room in a long gown. The ship's been featured in a number of paranormal shows, including Ghost Adventures and BuzzFeed Unsolved, and hopefully will get the repairs required to allow it to be investigated further in the future. Next up we have the Jamaica Inn. Located on Bobman Moor, Cornwall, the Jamaica Inn was built in 1750 as a coaching inn, which is the modern-day equivalent of a service station. Some of the travellers who stayed at the inn were less respectable than others and used the inn to hide away contraband that had been smuggled into the country. The Jamaica Inn is well known for being the setting of a 1936 novel of the same name written by Daphne du Maurier, and in present day, the inn features a restaurant, bar, shops, and several museums on the site, as well as a 36-bedroom hotel. The inn also conducts regular paranormal investigations that are open to the public with rooms 3, 4, 5, and 6 all being supposedly haunted. Paranormal TV program Most Haunted visited the inn and recorded what they've claimed is one of their scariest episodes to date, and the Ghost Society have published in-depth records on their investigations at the location, with the substantial areas being the Smuggler's Bar, the Stable Bar, upstairs in the old bedrooms and the rear restaurant and gift shop area. Managers of the inn have heard conversations uttered in a foreign tongue, which some have suggested could be Old Cornish. In addition, reports state that on moonlit nights, the sound of horses' hooves and the metal rims of wheels turning can be heard on the rough cobbles outside. A man in a tricorn hat and cloak has also been sighted and is said to walk straight through solid objects in the inn, and it's also reported that many years ago a patron left his half-empty tankard on the bar and went outside, only to be found dead the next morning on the moor, with previous landlords attributing footsteps to his spirit. I previously covered this location in a little more detail during the Tepe's advent calendar on the YouTube channel, so if you'd like no more, go check that out. And finally, we move on to a hotel found in Alberta, Canada. The Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel is over 130 years old, opening in 1888, and has its fair share of paranormal stories and tales. The hotel through its history has seen many celebrities, rebuilds, and also tragedies, with millions of guests said to have checked in it seems a few have not checked out again. The first and most notable ghost of the hotel is that of a woman in white, known by some as the Bride of Banff Springs. Though no origin of the spirit is known, the most popular theory dates back to the 1920s and is of a bride who fell down a flight of stairs after tripping on her dress. This spirit is usually reported veiled and dancing throughout the grand ballroom. Next we have the activity of room 873. Unfortunately, this room no longer exists, being permanently sealed after many guests claim to have been terrorised in this suite. The common theory around this room is that it's the place in which a man killed his wife and daughter and then himself in a murder-suicide, though some staff claim that this never took place. Finally, the spirit of Sam the Bellman is also seen at the hotel. 
Said to be the spirit of Sam Macaulay, the head bellman in the 60s and 70s, he's said to be a helpful and cheeky spirit, often seen by guests and being mistaken for an employee. One incident involved two elderly women calling the bell desk for assistance after they found their key would not work. The regular bellman was occupied with other duties and didn't respond for 15 minutes. By the time he arrived at their door, it was unlocked. One of the women said that an older bellman in a plaid jacket matching Sam's description exactly had helped them. And with that, that brings us to the end of Eight Haunted Hotels. Hotels. Let me know what you think of the hotels in the comments below. Are there any you'd stay at? Are there any you wouldn't? And are there any hotels you think I've missed that could be included in a part two? And now it's time for the Tepper's Paranormal Talking Point podcast news review. As you know, I do a lot of paranormal investigation, and when I do, I like to be comfortable which is why I wear clothing from allegedlypossiblymaybe.co.uk. With a wide range of high-quality clothing available for low prices, I strongly recommend checking out their website and buying some clothes. If you enjoy quality clothing, visit allegedlypossiblymaybe.co.uk and use discount code TEPIS at checkout to save 10% on your order. Okay, so now it's time for the Tepis Paranormal Talking Point Podcast News Review. Today I have four headlines to talk about. The first of which is, Dad and son feel that they're living in the conjuring with shadowy figure that dogs growl at. The headline goes on to say that a father and son have been left thoroughly freaked out after capturing a shadowy figure on camera in their spare room, following things going missing and their dogs acting strangely. Shadowy figures, strange smells and noises, things going missing and dogs growling at seemingly nothing seems like something out of the conjuring. But for Mark Wahlberg, no, not that one. And his son, this isn't a movie scene. The article goes on to read that the father and son have been left feeling freaked out after a series of supernatural goings on in their home, and after some time unsure of whether they were imagining things, if they've captured images of eerie forces at work. Mark had been wary of the spare room in his house for a few years, after his three chow chows had made a point to avoid the space and growled at unseen things in there. He'd also heard mysterious footsteps from inside, despite the room being empty. And after noticing items moving on their own, his son, Zachary, 26, set up a camera in July to investigate and what they caught left the previously sceptical duo convinced they're not alone. Mark goes on to say, my son Zachary has a tendency to leave his keys by the door but then they'll end up in the middle of the kitchen floor. These are heavy keys, they don't just drop. You'll hear the dogs barking, come downstairs and the keys are on the floor. So when Zachary came to stay with me, I gave him the back bedroom and he kept saying he was smelling strange smells. Initially I just thought, oh whatever, it must be the neighbours. He likened the smells in the room to a bin being left wide open. Zachary decided he'd had enough and got a camera that took still photos, but it didn't do videos. It had a motion detector on it. When they saw it had triggered to take pictures, they were trying to think of anything they could to debunk it. It must be a fly going onto the lens or something. But this shadowy thing would appear beside the bed in the corner, above the bed, everywhere. We had no explanation for it. So looking at the image provided, there is a black mass in the top corner. It looks like a sort of shadow. To me, it looks like it's close to the camera. It doesn't look like it's cast on the wall. So it is a physical mass with substance to it, as opposed to a shadow, you know, on the wall in the background. Um, It seems to go in front of objects, which again is reasonably compelling. It could very easily just be something in front of the camera, whether it's something they've put there or if it's something that's just fallen or flown in front. But it's a fairly interesting uh, image. It's, again, without any sort of further investigation or knowledge of the property, the image on its own is reasonably compelling, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily paranormal. And I think that it definitely requires further investigation. Next up we have ghost hunters take photo of old building and claim they've captured eerie figure. Paranormal Supernatural Investigators Island, who I'm convinced I've spoken about before, visited the Moore Hall site after hearing stories about strange sounds and sights in the area and took a chilling photo of the building. It was taken in County Mayo, Ireland, and now that I'm reading this again, part of me thinks I might have covered this story before, but I'll keep going because the image doesn't look familiar to me. They heard strange stories about sounds and sights in the area, and they took some photos when they were there. The property once belonged to famous Irish writer George Moore, and was also the ancestral home to President of the Republic of Connacht, John Moore. During the Irish Civil War, it was burned to the ground and was never restored. PSI wrote on Facebook, 
We arrived at the location early, we take pictures, instantly as we believe whatever energy is there will decide to stay or leave. In the corner of a window, the investigators snap what looks like an eerie figure. Looking at the photo, there is definitely something in the upper left window of the picture. Unfortunately, there's only one photo provided. I don't see any sort of, you know, before or after photos to show that the figures move. It could just be matrixing, it could be something that has a completely logical explanation, but because we don't know what it is, our brains are picking it up as a face. But it's an interesting photo. But yeah, without any sort of further information or other photos, I can't really make a decision on it. Moving on again, we have the story of a flight attendant who's spooked when she notices spirit move door behind her. A flight attendant has joked she's done after viewers spotted her door moving in a creepy way in one of her videos. Kat Kamalani is an air hostess who shares flight secrets and travel tips on her Instagram and TikToks. In one of her most recent clips, uploaded on the 30th of September, the flight attendant's retelling the story of how she met and fell in love with her husband. Behind her, the door moves back and forth as if it's caught in a draft. One person joked she had a house full of ghosts, and another told her to have fun with the ghosts. She shared the footage in another clip and wrote, I was filming this for TikTok, and after I posted it, I noticed the door moving. Her husband was at work at the time and her babies were asleep. It just starts moving and then stops. Kat said that the door hadn't moved like that in the six years she'd lived in the home, but agreed that anything was possible and that it could have been either paranormal or explainable. And having watched the footage myself, the door seems to move in a very slow way, but it also seems reasonably unpredictable. So it could be a draft, it could be a breeze, there is a vent sort of directly above the door that could cause it, but at the same time, it seems to move in a very strange way. There's something about it that is slightly eerie, but I don't quite know what it is. Um, it's an interesting video, but again, there are plenty of completely plausible explanations for it that aren't paranormal. And moving on to our final headline, we have Haunted pub manager fears ghost caught on CCTV moving furniture will scare off staff. Hayley Budd is concerned that her staff will be scared off in her pub if it continues to experience unexplained goings-on, such as moving furniture and eerie sounds in the cellar. A pub ghost just wants to make itself known, according to a landlord who fears staff will be scared off. She believes CCTV at the Lansdowne pub in Cardiff has finally caught her resident spirit in action. Since taking over the pub eight years ago, she says the ghost has moved furniture, swung a chalkboard about, and even bumped into someone. She believes it's Lady Lansdown herself who means no harm, but could be enough to put off workers sticking around for too long. On July 26th, Haley was sitting down on her break when a chair opposite appears to slide into the table at pace. Reflecting on the creepy encounter, she said she wasn't looking at the chair, she was looking at her phone, but she saw it out of her peripheral vision. She heard it as well, so she asked a customer if they'd seen anything, and they also heard the noise. She was trying to find a logical explanation, so in the video you can see her looking to see if it was something in her bag that had moved it, and she was trying to sell herself maybe it was the wind. She then checked the CCTV to make sure she hadn't been imagining it. One girl who works in the pub thought she'd bumped into another member of staff, but when she turned around, nobody was there. Nobody's ever physically seen the apparition of the ghost standing in front of them, but a couple of weeks ago the chalkboard started randomly swinging. A lot of the staff have said that if anything like this happens when they're there, they'll go home, so she hopes that this doesn't affect her staffing in any way. Unfortunately, the article I'm reading this from doesn't have any sort of video to show me this footage, but there is a couple of screenshots. It all looks fairly common, um, obviously without seeing it I don't know how I feel about it, but it is an interesting story and haunted pubs are always something that I find very interesting and will probably do a podcast on in the future. But for now, I've been Scott from the Tepes Paranormal Talking Point Podcast. I'll see you in the next episode.